<laughs> I've actually got a bit of a theory on why these arcs kind of come out the way they do and I'm interested to know your thoughts. G'day you legend and welcome back to another Electrician Reacts. Now what do you get when you combine a crazy electronics engineer with a super super slow-mo camera? Well you get the slow medi guy boom. Thing. Anyway, the slow mo guys and Electro Boom have done a collab and I cannot wait to react to it. So let's do it. Okay, let me see if I can. Phone warning, this video Turn gets very first. loud. <laughs> <laughs> Did you mean it? Hell happened there. <laughs> Hello, I'm Gab. I'm Dan. We're the slow mo guys. We've not done too much stuff with electricity. If on you guys channel. have been living under a rock, these guys are awesome. You know, Go and check them out, subscribe, yeah, there's so much yeah. fun. Because I've mainly been waiting to have access to two things at the same time. This camera and this guy. Mehdi! Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> this is Mehdi from Electroboom. Yes, nice um, to be here. I like your videos. Yeah, thank you. I like I... your videos. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thank so, you very much. This stuff looks pretty intense. What, what have you got for us there? Well, I have, a, I have two things. I have my Tesla coil here. It's a one Tesla Tesla coil. And then I have a Marx generator here that I... So I've reacted to both of these things, the Tesla coil and the Marx generator, which for both of them, I learned so much, uh, particularly things like around air gaps uh, and, and arcing and things like that. I made, uh, hopefully that will work. I want to figure out some stuff that happens to arcs in slow motion, and hopefully you can see it on camera. Yeah, so this camera will let us go up to, we've only ever done a million, but it will go up to 1.75 million wow. frames a second. And that's the insane. Mars generator, that's the reason I originally got in touch, because I right. remember watching that video. <laughs> What's going on? And you see all the sparks happen at the exact same mm -hmm. time. That's what it looks like, yeah. Yeah, and I thought, I wonder if they are actually happening at the same time, or whether in slow-mo you would see their separation. Yeah, hopefully the camera is fast enough to capture like if, if they it really happens that so if you don't know like the marks generator is essentially just a bunch of series resistors and parallel capacitors that take a high voltage dc input and then they create an even higher dc output but theoretically it should really all spark at once and it does kind of i would suspect depend on the spark gaps It'd be interesting to see whether they sort of cascade or just all just go at once this is going to be awesome at the same time. If it isn't fast enough, we will have failed you. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we for more Almost 2 million <laughs> frames per second. 10 years not fast again. enough. Okay, we'll start at, a th what, 100,000 frames a second? <laughs> That's the starting crazy. point. That's the starting point. <laughs> okay. for this one. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, ready. Okay, stop. It's like furry. It's still so fast. Like, look how, yeah. look how long that takes. I like the sort of ghost. It's amazing. Do you think the shape, is it leaving behind a condition of the air that means the next arc follows the exact same pattern? That's So, like, my first impressions of the arc is that it's, it's absolutely beautiful, but it's not like we haven't been able to see this before, like freeze frame on an arc. And we see this, of course, when we're talking about lightning bolts as well. But I'm really interested to know whether they're able to get down to enough frames per second to see the resonance frequency of the Tesla coil. That's what I think it does. Yeah, it, it should. It like, seems if... to be like the next arc follows very similarly the path of the last one, and it takes a few arcs to actually significantly change. Yeah. Like, use up that path. Well, they will move. The thing is that the arcs will heat up the air, and mm -hmm. the hot air rises, so oh, you, okay. that's why you see it. Oh, going up. I see. Oh, so yeah. it, it, that's why it's like... Yeah, yeah that's uh, why it goes. But otherwise, like because it's not very continuous, the air has some time to cool down. Yeah, okay. But the I don't know how long it takes for that because it creates an ionized channel, right? So what Mehdi's saying, I mean, kind of obviously makes sense. Hot air rises, and as those air molecules heat up, you're able to sort of excite them more easily, sort of more like a catalyst for that ionization process, that electron sort of flying off that molecule. Also, though, I suspect that would depend on the frequency. And I suppose that would go back to when he did the Jacob's Ladder. I mean, that's just one continuous arc across, which would mean that it just doesn't have time for the outside air molecules to cool down. So it just would continuously travel up that Jacob's Ladder. Pretty cool stuff. Are you, are you going to touch it? Yeah, well, you should. It, I mean, I've touched the... it before. It's not bad. It's like somebody's slapping you on the back of the hand at one hertz. <laughs> Don't try the one kilohertz. It's like somebody is slapping you at 1,000 times a second. <laughs> <laughs>
just so people are clear, one hertz is essentially one oscillation of an AC sine wave. So that would be starting at your zero all the way up to 100% positive, making your way back down to zero and then 100% negative and then back up to zero. So that is your full one hertz. <laughs> That's much worse. Hold the metal tight. So yeah, it I know it's going to happen you too. So, so, your super hand cool. directly, right? Let's see how that feels. Thoughts? I feel like I don't know what's going to be worse. And then I will increase the frequency as well and see if it will be much worse. <laughs> okay. You feel it? Not at all, huh? Nothing. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Were you feeling it? <laughs> it was like, filling up, it was like, no, no, it's good. Ow! Okay! Ow! Okay! Why am I still holding yeah, yeah. this? Oh, there you go. Oh, it's really jump. bright. Wow. It's brighter when it goes directly to the screwdriver, isn't it? Yeah, because instead of splitting in many branches, it just goes oh. in one. Oh, they meet in the middle. Oh! oh wow! No. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. Oh. They meet in Check that out! Alright, where do I start? So I've actually got a bit of a theory on why these arcs kind of come out the way they do. And I'm interested to know your thoughts. I suppose I should probably um, start with ionization, what that kind of means. And that's really the, the act of the negative electron on the valence or outer shell of the atom or molecule sort of being knocked off and then pushed up into another electron, which sort of starts this cascading effect. And the reason it does that is because sort of the amount of protons sort of are positively charged and then your negative electrons sort of pull themselves away with this really, really high electric potential that we have with the Tesla coil. Now, a lot of people talk about air molecules as sort of one thing, but I don't really see air molecules on the periodic table. So it's actually made up of a few different elements and the main ones are oxygen and nitrogen. The main one being nitrogen makes up like 78% or something like that. So for simplicity, let's just break down those two molecules, the main ones, oxygen and nitrogen. Now, if you look on the periodic table, you would actually think that oxygen is the one that is harder to break the bond because it's got more protons within the nucleus. But actually, because of something called atomic orbitals and then suborbitals, it's essentially the way that these electrons orbit around the actual nucleus. And because oxygen is inherently unstable in this 2p orbital, it's actually a little bit more volatile even with more protons. So as that arc actually moves through the air, my theory is that these are just the oxygen molecules having their electron taken away and then pushed into another oxygen molecule. So I don't know whether that's legitimate or not and, and whether that sort of outside corona effect might be trying to sort of push apart those nitrogen molecules as well. I'm interested to know your thoughts. Do you think that that's just a load of BS or do you think there's a bit of validity to it? Yeah, like there's electricity going in little bits in here. It looks like you're in space or something. Like so little, the voltage like... between this bit and that bit is high enough that arcs are jumping between the arc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what he's saying is that like, there's enough potential difference between this side of the arc and that side of the arc to create this corona effect. It's bloody amazing. <laughs> Things from here to here, is yeah, that Yeah, 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 it sounds, that's, that's it looks that like is. it, yeah. Even at 100,000. Yeah, it's wow. done. We need to go. We need to it's just a hundred thousand frames per second. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a lot. Straight to a million. <laughs> yeah, let's go to a million. Yeah, million. No, yeah, go all the way. Can you do one point seventy five million? Is that the maximum? Is yeah. that the best you can give That's me? The best <laughs> we can we've yes. never done one point seven five million on, on a Phantom before. That's true. This will be the fastest we've ever filmed on a Phantom. Oh, that would be something. Yes. <laughs> I am not a, um, a slow-mo person, but why would you not design a camera up to 2 million? Maybe it's almost impossible. I'm not sure. And you're here for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this camera is now recording so fast, it's turning every one second of real time into about 19 hours of footage. Oh, that's crazy. And we're recording for 2.2 seconds, so... Okay. I didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, wow. That, you, you, you can see, see it blinking on and off before yeah. it even makes it now. Well, That's we've amazing. confirmed it too. The air can blink at 250 kilohertz. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> can you tell oh, so me what is the frame difference between this peak of the voltage to the next one? That way. So Mehdi just said it's 
it's at 250,000 hertz. So 250 kilohertz. So that should be easy enough to calculate. Let's bring this up here. So you would take, oh, I wonder if they're, so what they would probably be doing is measuring only on one cycle, one side of the sine wave. So either the positive or the negative. So you would have to times it by two. So that would be 500,000 Hertz. So 1,750,000 divided by 500,000 is not going to be a whole number. 3.5, so 3.5 frame. It doesn't even have enough resolution to capture the full like frame rate of the resonance frequency. Oh my God. Maybe we can calculate the frequency of resonance. Actually, we can just see it's 9328, 9332. It's four, four frames. frames. Four, four, four frames, frames per second. Speed. Four frames, so they can't. 0.75 million. Yeah, it shows 430 kilohertz. Wow, I was expecting a close. No, 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 no. See, he needs to divide it. He needs well, to divide it. So it's broken. Or maybe you are still missing something. Because <laughs> he's taken the whole yeah, cycle. Did the I go, does it get brighter again? But it's not oh, quite. No, he's right. Sorry. I yeah. have to divide it by two as well. So it's around 220 kilohertz. And okay. that's because oh, no. they can't yeah, get like the full it's resolution. AC, so it's yeah. bright on the lower the negative mm -hmm. peak and yeah. the positive peak. Okay. Thanks, Betty. So, yeah, so that's right. Like, okay. boom, 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 boom. So the camera and the testicle aren't broken. Yeah, good. Everything okay. is good. We're just looking at like that is amazing. Unedited reality. Yes. Mm. There's, no, the there's no light. It's just insane to think. Like, obviously, theoretically, it, it works. You've got frames per second. Into the resonance frequency. But to think that you could literally capture it with a camera. I mean, this is like, this should have billions of views. It's truly amazing. Medi is now hooking up his Marx generator. Ah, the this Marx is the thing I saw, and I just had to know whether all the sparks were happening at the same time or whether there was an imperceivable delay. Do you think this will work, or do you think it will blow up somehow? Uh, uh... Let me turn. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, wow. Blood, that that's cool. so bright. So Bad bright. Light. So it's off. Okay, and on. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Wow. Wow. Okay. So we need to go faster sort of again. Like way, to go <laughs> way faster. Look at how bright that is. Is that all? What is this? Is this the electric fluff again? Look. Electric fluff. No, that. That doesn't look like in the lens. That looks like the corona effect. It's like the glow, though. It's quite, it's quite amazing. It's there from the lens, or it might be the fluff, actually. It could be fluff. Hello, it's Gav from the edit. This is something that we all missed when we were watching on the day, just because the screen is quite small and you can't notice everything. Mehdi discovered this watching the footage back when he was making his video. There's actually, in the final gap, a tiny little streamer just slithering towards the other bead. And as soon as it hits, it triggers the whole thing. I'm sure Mehdi will get into that a lot more on his analysis video. I mean, I think it kind of makes sense. The closer the spark gap, obviously, the quicker that is going to discharge. And if that's closest together, that's going to start the catalyst effect for the rest of them. <laughs> wow. Nice. Okay, should we go straight to 1,075,000? <laughs> no, there you go. Go, 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 go. We will learn. Go. Oh, wow. What? So bright. Did Look at all the fluff as well. Did it all happen at the same time? Yeah, it looks like it. Damn it! <laughs> Why are you disappointed in that? The I answer is it just that. happens at the same time. Uh, that's within one. What is the time difference there? If if it was two mega frames per second, then it would be like half a microsecond. So within five hundred nanoseconds, they've all. Yeah, I think he means one frame. 1.75 million, we'll just do one nanosecond divided by one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is, yeah, and then times that by 500 nanoseconds, which, yeah, which is it, when they all came on at once. Um. At least. <laughs> so there's no lead in that time either. It was just straight up boom. Look how bright that is. We honestly need to be filming at like 50 million frames a second. <laughs> I mean, that yes. would be crazy. So I think this is one of the coolest electrical science experiments I've seen on YouTube so far. That brings down my Electro Booms Marks Generator to number two, which I reacted to here. Also, make sure you subscribe to Electro Boom and the Slow Mo Guys.